So, okay, yeah, quick update on my AMD experience so far. So as you know, I uploaded a video this week talking about switching to AMD for 30 days and I'm using the 9070XT. And so far I've already ran into a couple of snags, but mostly found a workaround. So only two. The, uh, so recording in OBS is fine with the AV1 encoder, the audio, the video quality, all of that's fine. I am using the 9070XT's official AV1 encoder. Um, editing in DaVinci Resolve, the timeline, I have genuinely have noticed no difference. I did go into the preferences and check, make sure the box was checked for, you know, use the, the hardware encoder and everything. And it automatically recognized, hey, you have an AMD GPU in here yeah. now, we're gonna check the box for you. It was all checked. I didn't have to do anything. I'm like, sweet. The only problem came down to the render. And um, so my last video that's up on the channel at the time of this recording is the uh, Y 2025 suck for PC gaming. That video was completely filmed, edited, and uh, initially rendered with the 9070 XT. The render right. though, the render video was was bad though. I started watching it because I always proof, I don't know if y'all do this, I proof watch all of my videos yeah. before I upload. Yeah. And so I rendered it out, started watching it, I'm like, oh, we're good, we're good. And then about midway through, it looked like one of those old Asian movies with subtitles where it's like the, the audio and the video were just completely, I'm oh, like, like, I'm like, what the hell happened? And then, like, it was good. And then just like midway through, it's just like, That's and weird. so I tried, I, I, I tried about four, five different combinations with, with AMD encoding every one of them did the same thing so ultimately for that video i just rendered with my cpu came out fine uploaded i moved on but I, obviously i went back and then this is where we were talking a little bit about ai offline chat gpt and gemini um i went to chat gpt i took a screenshot of everything going on in davinci i said here's my screen davinci resolve 20 whatever the version is yeah um i have a 9070 xt i would like to use the av1 encoder what am i doing wrong and immediately it was like, oh, you got this check, but you need that. You're using the wrong yep. bit rate here. You're going too high or you're going too low. And it basically just gave me every freaking setting I needed. To, it's kind of awesome. And, and I was looking at it and I'm like, okay, on one hand, there's no way I would have ever found those specific numbers that because yeah. like odd numbers. It's not like a thousand here or five thousand. It's like random numbers. And I'm like, like 14 for this, 20 for that. And I'm like, I, I don't know what any of this means, but I'll give it a shot. Long story short, I applied the settings, rendered the same video, no desync. I'm nice. like, great, it works. Now, the sad part about that is a Google search would not have returned that for you. You would have never thought, because I'm telling you guys, you're like, you're talking niche stuff here. You're talking about working with DaVinci Resolve, using AMD and specifically 9070 yeah. XP and sp more specifically trying to use the AV1 encoder. Because the couple of the forums I went through, they were just like, Oh, just render with your CPU or use H265 or this. And I did actually try H265 and it still had the same desync issue. And I really? think the, I think crazy. the issue was related to bit rate. I think what I, whatever, whatever numbers I was using, it was like too high it wasn't or friendly something. for the encoder. Yeah, it just was not, was not friendly. That's interesting. One, yeah. yeah. I, I can, gonna, I can, I, I can share the screenshot with you of, of the actual numbers. If you guys want it in case you yeah, want to yeah. try it, I, I've only done one test at the time of this filming. I've done one test, but, um, it worked like where I did like five renders before and they were all out of sync or jacked up in some capacity. Yeah. That one test I did with that same video, it was flawless. Nice. Me hope. Hey. <laughs> oh, so my next video, this video, I'll probably render. Video it. looked good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with this video, I'll, I'll render it with the 9070 XT. And the other update I have is, so I'm working on setting up live streams on the channel. The goal is to go live like once a week maybe once every other week and I'll just do general tech news. And regardless of who shows up, I'm going live with a purpose and I'll talk about the news. And then that news will become e like each topic may be like an individual video. And the good thing about that is that it, when people do show up inevitably and we start talking and chatting, I can feature some of their feedback and comments in the video yeah. in real time. Uh, like, like NVIDIA just announced blah, 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 blah. Here's my thoughts. Hey, Danny, it's good to see you in the chat. What do you someone think? Someone can come in with a specific question or, yeah. you know, even an argument. And then, you know, you guys can have a bit of back and forth. And it yeah. kind of creates like its own automatic content that you can absolutely, eventually develop. Absolutely. And then people might, get, people might get excited because they're like, oh, I'm in the video. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, with that being said, though, I spent part of yesterday and today working on the stream. And I wanted to try this new software called uh, Meld Studio. Have either one of you heard of it? 
No. Nope. Never okay. So Melt Studio is attempting to be an alternative to Streamlabs and OBS. Basically, the idea behind it, you can record and stream with it just like OBS. But the idea behind it is that in OBS, if you want a really clean move transition or if you want to do like a drop shadow, all that stuff requires additional plugins and configuration. So you have to go research it. Whereas uh, Melt Studio is like all that stuff's built built in, man. It's automatic. You want rounded corners, grab your camera, pull it down. It's rounded in, in, in a split second. You want to drop shadow, the, check the button for drop shadow. Like, it's really cool. Uh, there's a few uh, videos on it. Uh, I first discovered it through Senpai Gaming, Harris Heller. Uh, so I was like, dude, this is awesome because I'm not trying to put a lot of work into the stream. I'm doing this thing as a part-time thing. Let's just get it up and running. Doesn't work with AMD hardware. So uh, that's that's it's the down, that's that's the downside. Uh I was uh, so like they flat out said that they don't support it or like you're, are you running into just so, some issues on your end? So, OK, so in OBS, when you pick your encoder, you always get a drop down menu and it's like, I want to use yeah. in bank. I want to use this or that. Right. Whatever. AV1, whatever. Mel doesn't have that. Meld has one Meld Studio to be more specific. Meld Studio does not have that. Uh, it has a, a checkbox that basically says hardware encoder that's all it says it doesn't say hmm. nvidia it doesn't say gpu it doesn't say amd it literally says hardware encoder and when you watch the tutorials everyone's using an nvidia gpu everyone checks the box for me using a 97 dxt that box is not clickable i cannot check Weird. it you, hmm. you check and nothing nothing it's like grayed out did so, you try the studio drivers or like what i didn't try the studio AMD drivers is. for that might be worth a shot Maybe. I mean, like once I figured out how the render works in uh, DaVinci Resolve, I'm like, okay, cool. I'm not going to go the studio driver route. Um, maybe the studio drivers will work for Meld Studio, but then I, I'm like, I can just not be lazy and set up OBS and just be done. I, I mean, yeah, because uh, the problem the problem I have with using studio drivers is it's going to take away from gaming performance to my knowledge. And I yeah, want to do that. that. And I've been gaming with the 9070 XT and that part's been really good. I played Call, Call of Duty Cold War last night with a buddy of mine. And I mean, I put it on 4K low and just it was it was cranking numbers, dude. Um, and yeah. I understand AMD favors Call of Duty, but this is an older Call of Duty. And when it first came out, and even now it's a, it's fun, hella fun. I like it a lot. Highly recommend it from Call of Duty perspective. But it's uh, it's a little janky, a little buggy, but it runs fine. And I and you I could, you I feel, could probably max that up. Yeah, I, I feel like easily. yeah, yeah, I could. Yeah, and it also has FSR and all that stuff built into if I wanted to use that. So um, it's pretty cool. Anyway. It's like ray tracing and everything built in. They, they, they did a War, lot right? with that game. Yeah. Cold War, yeah. And it's on okay, sale. Yeah, so this it, was done and came out after 2019. It was, yeah, that was still pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah and it's uh, it's on sale right now on Steam, I think, for like $19. I got my copy years ago on Blizzard. 30 uh, series, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But uh, anyway, that that's my quick update on the 9070 XT. Did you guys have any comments, thoughts, opinions, or whatever before we move on? I, I only had one comment, and I just realized that it, it's not relevant because of AV1. <laughs> I had... Uh, I had popped in the uh, 6800 that I had, the non XT 6800. So I had a couple of them I bought and I took the 5090 out and was just like cleaning it, popped it in, did the drivers, played around with it for about a day. And I was rendering, doing stuff on DaVinci Resolve, uh, but it was H.265. I forgot you said AV1 because I was like, oh yeah, dude, it's screwed through that. It, like, because of the 16 gigs of RAM, just chewed mm -hmm. right through it. No problem. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. pretty good card. Yeah. But again, uh, I didn't like I didn't change the settings too much. It immediately recognized that it was a Radeon GPU. I uh, just pretty much checked the box. I, I don't remember exactly what I did, but it seemed to be fine. But I, again, you had AV1 going on, so I don't know. It's a whole different gamble, you know, so. So yeah, still relatively no new from those other tried and true codecs. So yeah, yeah. definitely some quirks. What prompted you to switch to that or what was making you go with that option versus like just regular OBS. Oh, me? Yeah. Like what, what was the advantage of that one specifically? You talking about Melt Studio? Into? Yeah, Melt Studio. Uh, just the ease of it. So I've never used it before. I just saw the... Um, so, okay. I used to stream on Twitch back in the day when I first started E-Rock on Tech. And I actually streamed a hell of a lot more than I, sh than I made content, which was ironic because I'm like, I, I want to be a YouTuber, but I, for some reason I got it in my head. I can't remember how that I had to be a streamer too. Like for some reason, I just thought you I had did the to same do thing. <laughs> so, so I put a lot of effort. I mean, dude, I put a lot of, if, if I can find a video, I'm going to send it to you in our, in our group chat and show yeah. you like, dude, I, I custom built, I custom built 
a bunch of overlays and alerts and like every time somebody would like sub or tip or something goku would come up on screen and do kamehameha and then it would like go around my border per anyway i digress but the point is um that was years ago and i was like okay if i'm gonna get back into streaming i can't allow myself to lose the time by going down that road so i decided let me get up to date on streaming standards let me see what's new let me see what's available and when i was doing my research i came across mel studio and like i said the pitch is that you can be up and running in like five minutes or less and yeah. have a good, clean, cool. minimalistic, professional stream. As in camera, like I'm just chatting. Okay, let's switch. And then it moves down dynamically. You pull in your gameplay scene or your window, whatever you want to show on the screen. And it's it's beautiful, seamless, easy. You can do drop shadows, just pretty much anything that would require you to go and do like an, an external uh, plugin download with OBS. Yeah. It's built in natively to, to the app. Like that's the idea. So I was like, I'll try it. So that's what prompted me to try it. But I quickly was disappointed <laughs> when the box was grayed out. And I want to clarify the, the reason why I'm so obsessed with using AV1 for this testing process is because that is what I use with my NVIDIA cards. If, if I'm using my 5090, I'm using AV1. So the idea here to see how viable the 9070 XT is, I need to be able to match NVIDIA in every way possible. So if my NVIDIA yeah. card works with AV1 and the 9070 XT over here is is you know marketing the fact that they have an AV1 encoder. Then I expect it to do the same thing, and I mean with the exception of you know the little hiccups I mentioned earlier, it's it had like I'm fine. And um, it's got to do it, yeah. If you're yeah. especially if you're a creator, it's like yeah, you know. It's and I mean Mel, and to be fair, guys, I mean Mel Studio is like brand new. I mean like yeah, mid 2025, brand new, no coverage. Let's sponsor a couple of creators to talk about it. Brand new, like that, like. They're a small team getting up and running. I actually put out a tweet about it on X. I don't know if you saw it, but I actually tagged Meld Studio. I'm like, hey, guys, you're going to get the 9070 XT working on this or what? Yeah, um, maybe you, you could be like, hey, sponsor me and I'll do a little a spot for you guys. But you got to get this working. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I Just, mean, but it, guys, anyway. check check off that gray box. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you, Danny, um, do you final your renders in AV1? Uh, so when I'm actually I just started recently doing this, too, because I don't use DaVinci Resolve like you guys. I just use Vegas Pro because I've just been using that since my, the early days. And I'm like just trying to learn a new software now. It's a huge time sink. So yeah. maybe eventually when I get some more time on my hands, I might look into it more. Um, but uh, I was using an older version for the longest time and just recently got upgraded to version 22, which has support for AV1 uh, within actually using them for editing files and whatnot. Um, so only recently I started actually recording my gameplay clips in AV1 because of how efficient the codec is, because you can record at a lower bit rate versus H.264 yep. or even H.265 and still yeah. maintain the same quality, if not even better. Yeah. No thumbnails, um, but, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but the final render, I still end up, and it's good, well, and, and that's, well, that's the other reason, too, just comes down to software support but vegas 22 doesn't actually support uh av1 renders uh using nvidia which is really odd you can do it through cpu um but for nvenc it just doesn't work which is very odd um but yeah so just sticking with the tried and true h264 H for now or no sorry h265 h265 yeah. yeah. i don't i mean i don't blame you space. dude i mean what's the old saying if it ain't broke don't fix it right I, yeah <laughs> you know i, I mean gonna say i could after. use handbrake if i really wanted to but i'm like yeah, just true. an extra unnecessary i, I used step, to use that and it works it. i used to use handbrake and it works and it works quite well but it's like it's more work like if you don't have to why yeah 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 i, I, I'm I was like, gonna say Danny, like if you if you decide to go like Adobe or DaVinci at some point, um, it is pretty crazy. So like my video files are like anywhere from 20 to 30 gigs. Usually yeah. they cut the video file size down by quite a bit. And like I can render a 10 to 15 minute video. And I don't know, like, what do you think, Iraq, like five minutes? On a 5090. Yeah. yeah, on a 5090. <laughs> it's 50 pretty 90. fast, dude. It's, it's pretty fast. It's, yeah. it's, it's kind of nuts. Like seeing it, it the H265, I was waiting. 15 20 minutes sometimes like for yeah. a final render you know yeah. and and there's presets too right so like i think it defaults to like fast or something and that's when it does render fast i i'm such a i'm so bad when it comes to quality i like nitpick the hell out of it so i'm like 
I'll just change it off of fast and I'll wait another two minutes and, and do the I think I put mine on or slower too. Yeah. 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 So, but yeah, it's still really fast. I mean, even whenever you're doing like absolute best quality, it's, it's really fast. Yeah. Epos Fox is actually what initially turned me on to AV one and how good it could be. And then I think I saw digital foundry coded as well. Uh, yeah. Cover it as well. So it's anyway. pretty good. Yeah. All right. Uh, we ready for the next topic? Sure. Yeah. Let's go. All for right. It. Cool. Like, comment, subscribe. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, I had to do that for the end of the video. All right. 